Welcome once again to Leto's Law. Here's Steve Leto. I did a video a couple days ago about a controversy in the world of chess. In the world of chess. And there's a story about a guy who's a very highly ranked chess player uh, playing another highly ranked chess player. And after the match was over, one of them accused the other of cheating. And that story gained attraction to the point where it really affected the guy's life who was accused of cheating. I did a video about that, which I've now taken down, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But the interesting thing is that before I did the video, I read several articles, watched a couple of videos, looked at all the stuff that was out there. And I said, okay, I'm going to do a video on this because I think it's interesting. Now, one of those people has filed a lawsuit. And this is all over the news. Many people sent me the story. Thank you very much. And I have got this version from Sports Illustrated because it's not often I get to do a story from Sports Illustrated. Hans Niemann files $100 million lawsuit over chess cheating allegations. Madison Williams wrote it. And yesterday I read several articles, not just this one. I also read the lawsuit itself. And it's caused me to rethink a little bit what I believe to be true here. However, however, there's still some information that's not easily available that causes me to think that I need to step back a little bit and reserve judgment until I see a little more. And I'll get to that in a second. But one thing I must point out is that the lawsuit demands $100 million damages. Now, one thing is, I'm not even sure. If you were to look at Mr. Neiman's entire lawsuit and say every single thing he says is true, I'm not sure he's entitled to $100 million. But the $100 million figure is put in the lawsuit to get headlines because that number is in the headline. Hans Neiman files a $100 million lawsuit. But most lawsuits, the requirements are simply that you plead that it's above a certain amount to get into court. So to put that figure in there, number one, it's a wish list like for Christmas. But number two, it's done just for headline purposes. However, however, let's talk about the lawsuit itself and what's going on. Chess Grandmaster Hans Neiman is at the center of a scandal. He's now filed a $100 million lawsuit against world champion Magnus Carlsen and others for defamation. One of the defendants is Chess.com, which is the outlet that brought allegations of Neiman's cheating history to light in October. The overview of Neiman's playing history was reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. So all kinds of different organizations are looking into this and studying this. Neiman tweeted a link to his lawsuit Thursday saying, My lawsuit speaks for itself. His lawsuit claims that the defendants imposed devastating damages against Neiman by egregiously defaming him and unlawfully colluding by barring him from the professional chess world. And the defendants in the lawsuit are Magnus Carlsen, uh, whose first name, by the way, is Sven, Sven Magnus und Carlsen, uh, a company that Carlsen founded, Play Magnus, as DBA Play Magnus Group, Chess.com and Daniel Wrench, who is a, uh, an executive at Chess.com, and Hikaru Nakamura, who's another chess player who is closely affiliated, I believe, with Chess.com, but he does a lot of streaming, and he's very, very well known uh, through social media. The original report that came out stated that the 19-year-old Hans Niemann likely received illegal assistance in online games. And they were talking about when they studied the online games he played, uh, that they looked at those and and I believe it was chess.com who said that it appeared that he was getting some kind of assistance. The most recent occurrence was said to have been in 2020. They said they had a 72-page report that stated that Neiman admitted that he had cheated uh, and he made his admission in private and was banned from the online platform for a period of time. But it also described irregularities with his in-person chess matches, mentioning many remarkable signals and unusual patterns in Han's path as a player. So chess can be played over the board, as they say. You and I sit down, we put a chess board between us, pieces are on the board, and we play face-to-face over the board. You can also play chess online, and your opponent can be someplace else anywhere in the world. You can't see them necessarily, depending on what platform you're on, and all you can see is their moves, okay? And so it's extremely easy for someone to cheat playing online because you can get a handheld uh, device, like a telephone, like a cell phone, 
and load a chess engine onto it and have it tell you what moves to make. So that's easy. We've discussed that before. And many people know that, but I'll make sure that's clear. So the thing about this is, is that if you're in the privacy of your own home playing online, that's one thing. But an over-the-board game face-to-face -face with your opponent, especially under tournament circumstances, would be a very, very different thing. So Neiman, according to Sports Illustrated, later admitted that he cheated in two different situations, but when he was much younger, 12 years old and 16 years old. However, Carlson accused Neiman of cheating at a previous event, which Neiman won. However, Neiman continues to deny that he cheated while playing against Carlson. It's a very specific statement, which may or may not be specific on purpose. Chess.com's investigation into Neiman's play did not find any cheating in his over-the-board matches, including his match against Carlson, although the outlet did note that it usually discovers cheating only in online matches. So chess.com says, look, we did not find any cheating in his over-the-board play, but we don't normally look at that. So take that for what that's worth. Now, the lawsuit says, um, Neiman said in his lawsuit, that Carlson's accusations came from the world champions not wanting his reputation to be impacted by the loss. And by the way, it would be a big deal because Magnus Carlson rarely gets beaten. Rarely, rarely. And so they have this ELO score that how they rank you as a chess player. And you gain points when you beat somebody of high stature. And you lose points when you lose. <laughs> it sounds simple, but it's very complicated. And the point is that when Carlson lost this match, this game, well, that's going to hurt his score. So it says here, enraged that the young Neiman... 12 years his junior, dared to disrespect the king of chess and fearful that the young prodigy would further blemish his multi-million dollar brand by beating him again, Carlson viciously and maliciously retaliated against Neiman, the lawsuit says. Now, I can tell you a couple things. That there were all kinds of reports circulating previously. And there were people who said... That, for instance, Magnus Carlsen said, I'm playing this guy across the board. We're playing, and Carlsen has played everybody. He's played every anybody who's out there of note, he's played. Okay. He says, I'm playing this guy, and I get the impression that he's not even like thinking very hard, that he's not even putting any effort into it. That something seems wrong about this. So Magnus Carlsen says that partly it's based on his own gut instinct from playing over-the-board matches against many, many people, okay? So that's that's one of the things that, that's going on here. Several people had reported that they had run some games of Neiman's through chess engines, and you can ask a chess engine to analyze a game move by move, and there were reports out there that Neiman was routinely outplaying the grandmasters who normally are in the 70 to 75% of accuracy range and was routinely playing at the 100% range. Now, if that's true, that would be a problem. However, there's no mention of that made in this story, nor in the lawsuit. Now, of course, it wouldn't get mentioned in the lawsuit because that would go against them and you don't plead things that hurt you necessarily. But there are a couple things in the lawsuit that I found unusual, that I found unusual. So paragraph 79 of the lawsuit says, Neiman not only beat Carlson, Neiman embarrassed Carlson by defeating him with the black pieces and playfully taunting him during and after their match. Now, the match they're referring to, I believe, is a game, not a full match. I believe it's simply a game on September 4th, 2022. So it should actually say, Neiman not only beat Carlson, Neiman embarrassed Carlson by defeating him with the black pieces and playfully taunting him during and after the game. Because you don't play the black pieces for an entire match. You play black, then white, then black, then white. It alternates. So they're obviously talking about a single game. But it says that he was taunting him during the play. And I would be shocked if that was true because the etiquette of chess is so serious that you don't sit there and badmouth and, and trash talk your opponent like you're on a basketball court downtown, right? This is, this is, 
This is actually a little weird. Now, if he taunted him afterwards, I, I can see that being something that was done. I would love to see, and if anybody knows what they're talking about there, if you can find that somewhere or a reference to it somewhere, I'd love to know how did Neiman taunt Carlson during the play. I'd love to see that because I would be surprised if Carlson had put up with that. And so if someone starts taunting you while you're trying to concentrate, you'd get up and walk out at that point and go, excuse me, you know. So that's that's a little crazy. Another thing to point out is that they've sued Carlson and Play Magnus, his, his company, and Chess.com, Daniel Wrench, who's an executive of Chess.com, and Hikaru Nakamura. And they say in the lawsuit that Carlson is in the process right now of selling his company to Chess.com. And if that sale goes through and finalizes, it's going to become an extremely powerful and valuable entity. And the argument they're making in the lawsuit is an interesting one. And they're making the argument that Carlson reacted like this, not because Neiman is cheating, but because Neiman beat him right at the moment while he's trying to negotiate the best price possible for his company, Play Magnus. And they explain that that's what they think is going on and why they're also suing Chess.com, one of its executives, and Hikaru Nakamura, who apparently also made some comments online about Hans Niemann. And they are saying that this is all being done, in essence, because of the fact that they're trying to keep and prop up the price or the value of Carlson's brand as a chess player and as the big chess guy out there. They did not name as a party, for instance, FIDA the official international organization that is generally considered to be the governing body of chess. Now, it is also interesting in the lawsuit, paragraph 60 says, Neiman is American chess prodigy. I think they mean Neiman is an American chess prodigy. Uh, But 136, 136, they say numerous officials and experts confirm there is no evidence that Neiman cheated against Carlson. And they specify again against Carlson. Uh, So the real question is, what do the experts think about the other games? Because that's an interesting question. So I'll let you know that I understand there's a distinction. So there's two people playing chess and one of them accuses the other one of cheating in that game that they're playing at that moment in time or that they just played. If that's true, That obviously is a bad thing. But for someone to stand up and go, not only did they cheat in this game, they cheated in other games. Now, here's the interesting angle. What if there was evidence of him cheating not against Carlson, but in other games? So that is an interesting distinction. It might get fleshed out in court. We'll see what happens on that. But they do specify that there's no evidence that he cheated against Carlson. However, the lawsuit claims that these accusations have destroyed Neiman's life. Now, interestingly, there were a couple chess organizations or entities that put on chess tournaments that apparently have decided that until they see more, they're not going to condemn Neiman as a cheater. So he has still managed to be allowed to play in other venues. But apparently there were some that said, well, we have an issue now. Because Magnus Carlsen, who is the big dog in the field, says that he won't play in tournaments that this guy's in. So that leaves us with a choice, him or him. And if that's the case, well, then he has an interesting argument. Now, Neiman is suing those people collectively for slander. And slander is when you speak something about somebody that is false and it harms their reputation and damages result. That's the real simple explanation. Someone's talking trash about you, and it's false, and it hurts your reputation. Two is libel. Libel, and libel is when somebody prints something negative about you. And nowadays, libel quite often occurs on the internet, because people type things into Twitter or elsewhere, and those are not spoken words, they're written words. So libel. Number three is the interesting one, the Sherman Antitrust Act. And the Sherman Antitrust Act says that in business... 
People in business cannot collude, get together and work in concert in an attempt to harm competition. And the argument here is that the people at chess.com, the executive and the company itself, and Magnus Carlson and his company have gotten together and are doing these acts, the slander and the libel, in an attempt to take care of their business and doing this at the detriment of other businesses. Uh, I'm not quite sure how that's going to play out, but it's an interesting argument. I never would have guessed that one. They also argue tortious interference with contract and business expectancies. And that's worded differently from state to state. It's often referenced as simply tortious interference with the contract or tortious interference with an advantageous business relationship. Uh, and basically, it's this. You and someone else are in a business relationship or about to enter into a business relationship. Sign a contract, make an agreement, whatever it's going to be. And I know that. And you're going to benefit from that contract. So I come in and somehow I interfere with this. I interfere with what you're doing with somebody else. So I'm the third party. So contracts, you often say there's A and B and a third party. So you're A, you're negotiating with B, you've got a lucrative contract on the table, and I come in and screw things up. Okay, tortious interference with an advantageous business relationship or a contract uh, and business expectancies. And so Hans Niemann says, that when you accuse me of cheating, you're not only hurting my personal reputation, but I can't play in some tournaments now. And Hans Niemann makes a lot of money playing in tournaments. So if he can't play in tournaments, he's lost that money. So that's his argument there. And then number five is civil conspiracy. Simply saying that these all these people got together and started working in concert with one another in an attempt to do bad things to me, Hans Niemann, and he says the accusations have destroyed his life. So it's a $100 million lawsuit, as I pointed out. $100 million was put there specifically because it will raise eyebrows. It will be in the headlines. I'll probably even put it in the title of this video. But the bigger question is uh, two things. One is whether or not he cheated against Magnus Carlson. And there might not be any way to ever figure that out. There might not be any way to ever prove conclusively one way or the other. You know, in other words, with the, with the proof that you, ha you have when you see something with your own eyes and, oh, there it is, you know, that kind of thing. That's one thing. Whether he prove, you know, whether, whether it can be proven that he cheated in other games, uh, personally, I think that if they analyze games and run through chess engines, and if they find suspicious behavior, depending on how suspicious it is, I am actually inclined to give that more weight than some people are. Because I've mentioned before, I, 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 I follow chess. I remember as a little kid following Bobby Fischer. Uh, at the time, I didn't quite understand what he was all about. Bobby Fischer was a tragic figure because at the time, he was the world's best chess player to an extent that he couldn't find a competition. It, it literally, he, he played everybody and beat everybody. And it's very, very lonely at the top. And now, I'm not using it as an excuse to explain away his later behavior. He actually became a very, very troubled and disturbed individual. But I've read two biographies of him. I've seen all kinds of movies about him and documentaries about him. And Bobby Fischer, if you simply look at his games, the games he played, their art, their artistry, it's, it's, it's astounding how good some of his games were. And when they run his games through a chess engine, he plays generally in the 70 to 75% accurate range. And so if someone comes along as playing substantially better than that, I would have a problem with that. But like I said, I saw reports saying that that had been done. So I'd have to go back now and do a little more research because of the fact that I'm now seeing stories that are coming up on both sides of this. So in case you're curious, I did pull down my video, the previous one. And the reason I did that is simply that when I read the articles about this the first time and went through all of them, I saw references, for instance, to the fact there's a report that many people said, we've read the report, blah, 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 blah. I haven't seen that report. I haven't seen the report. So that coupled with some other stuff here, primarily that I've now heard both sides of this, and there's not enough evidence on the table for me to pick a winner just yet. 
So I have to kind of go, you know something, I'm going to step back on this and see how it plays out. I will tell you one thing, though. And one thing is that the problem with chess has always been that it's, it's a terribly boring thing to watch unless you're really into it. But if you're watching a classical game of chess played in real time, it can be boring because, among other things, it can take two days. So two players make enough moves to hit what they call time control. One player seals his next move, and they get up, and they walk out, and they come back the next day and finish the game. Can you imagine if tennis matches did that? You know, so, so chess is a relatively difficult game to watch. It's not made for television, okay? Now, more and more people have been watching chess, and, and they now have things like blitz chess and speed chess and all this other stuff. But classical over-the-board chess, not so much. What I would love to see happen, because we all know there is actually a simpler answer to this than going through years of litigation. Because litigation is the only thing slower and less interesting than watching classic chess over the board. What they need to do is announce Hans Niemann, Magnus Carlsen are going to play. And they will play in a winner-take-all tournament where there will be all kinds of things put in place so that nobody can cheat. And the winner gets an absurd amount of money. And I assure you right now, they could find sponsors for that. Because it would be the biggest thing to ever happen in chess. And for the first time in a long time, you've got people who've got no idea how to play chess interested in chess. And by the way, when Bobby Fischer won against Boris Spassky in 1972 in Iceland, he returned to America as a hero. He was a hero for a little while. He wrote a book that was a best-selling book. Bobby, Fe- Bobby Fischer t- teaches you chess. That you know, it was it was a best-selling book. They they he appeared on talk shows. He, you know, it was it was it was crazy. There was a chess fever in America for about three minutes. <laughs> it was primarily because he beat a Russian. Okay, in 1972, that was a really big deal. But If somebody said, we've got a ton of money from sponsors, we're going to put it all in a pile on the table like they do at the poker matches, and to say, you guys play a series of games, winner takes all, that would be fascinating. I'd love to watch that. Especially if Hans Niemann said, you know something, this lawsuit is nice business. That's that's nice. That's nice. But you know something? Instead of a $100 million ask in a lawsuit, which you'll never get, uh, somebody put up $10 million. Somebody put up $10 million. And we'll put it on a table right here. And Magnus and I will play chess. Winner gets it. That would be a big deal. And I've mentioned before that I am an attorney. I've been practicing law for 31 years in the state of Michigan. I've also acted as an arbitrator. And as an attorney trying to settle cases and as an arbitrator trying to resolve cases for parties, you often try to think of these kind of creative solutions. (laughs) That, my friends, is a creative solution that would work. That would work. Because as you can imagine, if they announced that and Magnus Carlsen said, no, I'm, I'm not willing to do that, then everybody would look at him and go, oh, dude, then you don't really think he cheated, do you? If he said, yeah, I'll do it. And if Neiman said, yeah, I'll do it too. Because deep down, deep down, don't get me wrong, money is nice. Deep down, your reputation is actually quite valuable. And so if I had been branded as a cheater or a liar or some kind of scoundrel internationally, and I thought my reputation was destroyed, if I could sue people and get some money for that, yeah, that's some vindication when you get a judgment and the judgment says these people now all, all owe you money. And you can wave it around and go, look, I'm right. Court says I'm right. Think about this, though. Go back into the field of battle and do it again. Then it doesn't matter what people think of you. People won't think that of you anymore because you can prove that it wasn't a fluke and it wasn't a cheat. So there you go. That's my proposed solution. <laughs> my proposed solution to Hans Niemann and Magnus Carlson should go head-to-head for a gigantic pot of money 
And I guarantee you they could raise that today. They absolutely could. So uh, Sports Illustrated published the article. Madison Williams wrote it. Hans Neiman files $100 million lawsuit over the chess cheating allegations have been leveled against him. Milos, Sean, John, Andrew, Daniel, Craig, Jordan, Angelo, Dylan, Jason, and William all sent it. Thanks a lot. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Necessity is the mother of invention. Laziness is its father.